actually in the last class we were just talking about uh, this double integration part thing so we have seen clearly in the last class that uh, uh, you can integrate any function using this uh, two point or three point cross quadrature uh, numerical integration and you are getting exactly exact integration as uh, you are getting for uh, by the, the numerical techniques. So in this case, you are, uh, you are actually minimizing the error in integration at the same time, they are the simple one. So you need not to calculate many points there. So we did double integration uh, and uh, single integration also. You can do triple integration if you have, but generally those doesn't come. Those come in case of volume integration type of thing. So if you have that, you can do it uh, three times. So you can have one more function there, one more weighted function. And then your number of terms would become now. Then in that case, I think 27, correct? Yes, sir. You go three, yes, sir. three into three, right? <clears throat> So, and then you will get it. Your weights uh, are fixed, your positions are fixed from there at the, on those points you have to calculate the function and then your part is finished. So, after having those, uh, that particular, I mean the knowledge of double integration, what uh, various type of uh, solution techniques so let's talk about finite element solution of uh, coupled partial differential and ordinary equations in multi-component polymeric coatings. So I have taken this as an example. You can choose any one of them. So we will start with this. So what you have practically in uh, this is just a coating here. Actually, you have a substrate. So you always need a substrate. Substrate could be impermeable or permeable and uh, means in case of metals, it are not uh, permeable. In case of household thing, they, those are permeable because brick can also misabsorb the something actually, right? So considering this impermeable one. So here you have your complete uh, this coating solution actually what you are going to apply. So whatever flux is here of your all the solvents because whatever the diffusion flux you have here at the substrate would be equal to zero because flux is coming from top to bottom because the nothing is going from here to further bottom, right? So therefore this is your flux boundary curve because most of the time when you do the modeling and simulation part, Nobody is going to give your boundary conditions and all this. Sometimes if you are the developing your own model, so this is what you have to develop your boundary conditions. You should have the idea how to generate it. If you are the solving for someone else's model, you will have everything. You have to just need a technique to solve it. So here you are balancing the flux. Same thing, you are balancing the flux on top. Top is open to atmosphere. So whatever the diffusion flux will reach at the, the interface, same will go to the surrounding air uh, by convection mass transfer. So that would be given by this. Diffusion flux would be, will be balanced by convective mass transfer flux subgrid. Now, uh, Heating uh, is always possible because you cannot have two things at the same temperature. So in that case, uh, you will have uh, the heating either from top side or bottom side or from both the sides. So if you are uh, outside have gas have some temperature capital TZ, so you can calculate this is just a heat transfer from uh, gas to the this the metal substance it and this is also from bottom side this particular term now this one is uh, heat which is being the removed actually uh, by this uh, convective mass transfer because the vapors will leave so some heat will be associated with that now this is you can say that specific heat capacity of the bottom substrate here so practically it OCP thickness so this is for coating part Second term is for the, the substrate part because both will absorb the heat. 
for ease of the simplification of this we are considering that whatever temperature of coating same temperature is there for the substrate also because considering the coating is very thin in terms of micron so we are not considering any variation of temperature uh, within the coating and uh, in the substrate also so from z equal to this and z equal to this minus h the coating temperatures are same so if you see from here you have two parcel the differential equation one for solvent concentration of one solvent concentration two and these are given the nothing but your why fixed law of the diffusion actually so if you if you want to write for first one this you very well known that dc upon dt equal to del upon del z d dc upon dz this is very well known for binary system right so uh, just say pure component one so pure component one is this if you have two components so second component movement of the, the diffusion or concentration gradient can also force the first concentration first solvent to diffuse so this is the diffusion of solvent one due to a concentration gradient of solvent two so this is called actually uh, cross diffusion term actually or we are, uh, and uh, then same way you can write for the, the solvent two so these are two partial differential equation because the concentration depends on time and position here the concentration of top would be different as you will go deeper and deeper your concentration would also get changed so concentration is the function of two things solve means the distance and time fine hello yes sir, yes, sir. Uh, yes sir next one is thickness change so thickness would only change because the mass is getting evaporated let's say this entire coating is the shrinking the lateral uh, longitudinal side only no change in the lateral side so in that case just calculate how much mass is there at a uh, at a particular time divided by this entire cross section will give you the thickness fine so this is practically uh, uh, this uh, rate of ch change of mass per unit area per unit time which is the nothing what is called thickness change okay Yes. Fine. Now this is what we have to solve. So we need not to worry how to solve the OD. We are, we already know the OD, the solver actually. Uh, we have Rangi uh, methods and some other OD solvers. So these are two ODs, one for temperature, one for thickness. Now only thing that we need to be worried for these two PDs. So these need to be converted somehow to OD so that we can solve all all of them actually so we will convert these two by this galerkin's finite element method so let's see what are these these boundary conditions uh, as i explained in the figure first you want to uh, write the boundary condition of top surface so whatever the diffusion flux of solvent one at top would be given by convective flux so convective flux is given by this actually same thing for solvent two, the diffusion flux at the solvent two or top would be given by this again by convective flux. Now boundary condition at uh, bottom, uh, you need uh, diffusion flux of solvent one at z equal to zero would be equal to zero because the nothing is permeating inside this substrate because it is the impermeable. You will have the diffusion flux, but convective flux or the nothing is going out further so therefore the right hand side term is zero here here for solvent one also and solvent two also by chance you have a porous substance or let's say some other thing then you will have something here how much is getting transferred there fine so you to solve anything uh, by fine uh, means any technique you need a model equation you need the boundary condition fine so you have uh, because uh, here you can see that uh, how many uh, <coughs> variables are there. So practically C1 and the C2. So practically you need uh, 
boundary condition for both of them at two places actually, right? Two equation, two boundary condition, two component, two boundary condition, right? Correct? Yes, sir. Now, this our model equation conditions are fine. So let's see how to solve them. So this is what you have. So this is what the technique is. Technique say that you have those those partial differential equations are coupled nonlinear partial joint differential equation. Coupled means the equation one cannot be solved alone because it depends on concentration of solvent two. So therefore, they are coupled. They need to solve uh, simultaneously. You cannot solve them individually. So once they are coupled, you use finite element method using Glirkin's quadratic basic function. What does it do? It converts those coupled partial differential equation to coupled nonlinear ordinary differential equation. It converts this, this particular technique Finite element method using Glirkin's quadratic basic function. This converts your coupled partial differential equation to coupled ordinary differential. Once you have ordinary, now your problem is solved, right? You can use your Runge Gutta methods or any other ODE solvers to integrate them or to solve them, correct? Now, this is the technique here. Now you have the choice that you, in finite elements, you have the choice. Either you can put equal element size throughout the means your boundaries, or you can put unequal. Depends. What do you want, actually? Just like in finite, the difference one, you don't have this freedom. There you have a fixed uh difference size or the elements or you can say the difference points which are fixed in the entire geometry but in case of finite element you have this choice you can change the element size actually so this the depend wherever you want close by point you can do that wherever you want go far away you can do that part so that is the beauty of this finite element one so this is being done deliberately to reduce your computational time or to capture, let's say, a steep concentration profile, as I explained to you that day, that if you have profile of something like that in a, in a smaller change of space, your concentration is changing drastically. It means you have to take there more number of points to capture that type of profile. After that, what you have there, you will get some integration term there actually, and that those integral part is being integrated by three point Gaussian quadrature using the basis functions and they're the, in the derivative. So this uh, is, uh, I just taught you in the last class, what this Gauss quadrature is. Now, once we have everything, you got a ODE. Now, this ODE but, uh, means you can write your own code or you can use your inbuilt code of uh, this MATLAB. So I use this ODE 15 as actually. So MATLAB also have several inbuilt code, which I will tell you also how to use them. OK? Now, this is what about this. So let's see uh, uh, what is the how to work further actually so this is what you have uh, uh, so you have their concentration right because concentrations were there so you want to uh, discuss what finite element says that uh, Gilligan's finite element one so your uh, this concentration is uh, your main variables, which depends on uh, time and space, right? So it is being uh, actually defined as a product sum of two functions. One is u, one is phi. Is it visible or not? It's visible, sir. Okay. So one is u, one is phi. So u is purely a function of time. And phi is purely a space function. So your uh, uh, unknown means your concentration is divided into two parts. Same thing, solvent two concentration is divided into V and phi. So first we have divided into this particular part. Okay, this is first part. 
Now, once we have defined concentration as a summation of u and phi j, now this we need to substitute back in our main equation. Let's see what are we getting after that. So this is just a definition of phi are basis functions and are nodes in the domain at which the solution need to be computed. Uj and phi j are unknown coefficients. So if we know them, we can calculate that. Now, phi j is basis functions you want to choose in the such that it have value 1 at node j and 0 at any other point. I will explain what nodes are the, there actually. Now, this choice of uh, basis functions under the computation coefficient u and j as a solution at the node. So, whatever you have a value at u and j, j as a particular node, that is the other solution at you need not to do anything further now functions these are there piecewise continuous polynomials so what i will uh, explain what piecewise there they are changing from element to element they are not same function throughout the geometry each element they are different okay and uh, once we have this uh, this uh, is a uh, certain degree and they lend themselves so easy Integration. So once we have same functions which are changing easily from one element to another, your, your, your integration is also can be generalized actually. So let's see what is this actually. So this is what uh, now once we have all this thing, we have made orthogonal to all functions and complete set of finite number of independent functions. Orthogonal means you just multiply by a basis function and just Calculate at all nodes points and the summation must be equal to zero actually that you call orthogonalized points now Come back he here. This was your equation that your DC upon D DC one upon DT Was equal to del upon del Z, right? Pushtha. So we are first calculating only left hand side left hand side may what equation you have DC upon DT only right? Correct or not? Yes, sir so now we have put c equal to what? The summation of u, j, and phi, j, correct? Yes, sir. So we are the differentiating summation of u, j, phi, j with respect to t. That's what I did here. So it was the differentiating into two parts. One is the differentiation of u, j with respect to t. Other one is the differentiation of phi, j with respect to t. Is this point clear? Because your C was the summation of uh, UJ phi J, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now this is fine. Now you see from here what can be done. So you know the UJ is the function of time. So it would have the is the derivative d u del u j upon del t. Now, phi j is only function of space or distance, so it, it will not change with respect to time. So this derivative would uh, del phi j upon del t would be equal to zero. Uj is purely a function of time, so its partial differential will, will be converted to the total derivative. Is that fine? Keep responding in mean yes, sir. Okay, so once you have this, so you will end up with this one, right? Del C upon del T would be equal to summation of del UJ upon uh, del T phi J. Now UJ would be convert del would be converted now to total the derivative because UJ is purely function of time only. Now once we have this, we want to differ. We have one more term in that equation is del C upon del Z also, right? We have, in the left hand side, we have del C upon del T. Right hand side, we have the term del C upon del Z also, right? So we want to calculate that term also. So if you want to calculate del C upon del Z, so differentiate again uh, the, your, the summation of uh uj phi j with respect to z so you that mean that differentiating it uh, twice uh then after that uh, again you know that uj is purely a function of time only so del uj upon del z would be equal to zero phi j is purely a function of space so this term will not be equal to zero 
so you will left with del c1 upon del z would be equal to uj del phi j upon del z is that fine yes sir similarly we can do for two also for two case also we will end up with this one del c2 upon del t would be del v j upon del t into phi j next is we can write upon del c2 upon del z would be equal to vj del phi j upon del z fine we will get this now we have everything with us we have del c upon del t we have del c upon del z now we can substitute everything into our main equation what our main equation is main equation is this right main equation were del c upon del c1 upon del t equal to del upon del z d11 del c1 upon del z minus plus actually del uh, del upon del z d12 del c2 upon del this was our main equation now everything has been brought to one of the side so this is now your is called the now this is called the residue actually residue means the difference between left and right hand side because once they are the difference that is called the residue fine Yes, sir. So, what is uh, psi here? I will tell. I will tell. Once more. Now, this is the actually the uh, mean the residue, and this the residue is being solved, integrated in entire uh, domain, and it is multiplied by this a set of basis function phi. Just to make this entire uh, uh, summation of this. Should be equal to zero. So psi is the basis function which is chosen in such a way so that the, the residue should become equal to zero, and then once it will become the zero means it is our complete solution. So this is the technique actually. So we are making the residue orthogonalized to each function of psi. Psi is the basis function. and how to get the psi i will tell you that particular part also so you are the you multi first you are getting a residue now is residue is being multiplied by practically a, this is called a infinite set of psi which makes this entire the residue equal to zero but infinite one we cannot calculate it so we are doing a finite set of psi so psi is just a One to n. So let's say you have n number of the elements, so n number of nodes. So each time you will have psi one, psi two, psi two, psi three. So I will tell how to use this. <coughs> okay. Uh, Sir, so what about the limit of integration zero to l? How are we taking that? Zero to l is the entire thickness, entire the domain length. Okay, sir. Okay. Zero to l is entire yes, the domain length only. Fine. So this we wrote for the equation one. This we wrote for equation two. Now we know the everything. We have converted this c into in, uh, in terms of, of u and uh, phi, c two also in terms of v and phi. So we can the substitute all of them here. Correct. Yes, sir. And we are the multiplying by this set of the basis uh, means uh, function to make it equal to zero. So then, in that case, uh, in case of that final complete set of the solution, this should become your residue should become equal to zero. So this would become the zero at now actually, but we are multiplying psi and j. So this side would be equal to zero actually. So let's see. So, first, so this is what you have here. So, in equation first one, you have you are the substituting at this particular place, dc upon this. So, you are taking this equation number twenty-five. In this, you are the substituting the expression of your dc one upon dt, dc one upon dz, dc two upon dz. This we have already derived from uh, uj phi j and vj phi j. Okay. so we have the substituted everything in equation number 25 fine 
Yes, sir. After that, we are just the rearranging it and the solving this particular part that how to do it. So summation in it. So you have how many terms here? One term here, one term here, two, one term here, three. So you have three terms. So you have uh, put the limit uh, actually on term one, then term two, then term three. Now integration and the there's the summation sign could be uh, actually change actually interchange. So let's see what I did further. So next thing you did for the equation number 26 also 26 may you have put here dc1 upon dz dc2 upon dt and dc2 upon dz substitute everything here this would be for second equation of solvent 2 so this also you wrote directly in three three part part one part two part three fine yes sir now uh, this these one we want to rearrange them and uh, we want to formulate them so once we have this so you have first term was this so this uh, del u uh, j upon del t psi j so summation integration sign can be interchanged there so if you will interchange this you can rewrite in this particular format and whatever terms are there of uh, time, you just keep it one side. Whatever functions are there of the space, keep it to another side. So if you see here, your phi is completely the space function. Your psi is also a space function. And dz is already a, the space coordinate only. So all phi, psi, and dz are the the space coordinates so those are clubbed together now u is only function of time so this is being taken to one of the sides so uj is a function of time so this is kept to one of the side now this is what you have and these sign can be interchanged the limit uh, mean the, the integration and the summation can be interchanged without any problem so they don't create any problem there so finally, you end up of this one that phi j uh, psi j into dz integration of that, and uh, then you are getting uh, this particular equation number twenty nine. So this is the term you got for practically your dc one upon dz dt. Okay. Okay, sir. So now once we have this so same thing can be done for other uh, component also so you have term one term two so let's see uh, so this one uh, the first one that you have here this one now uh, you can write for i equal to one two three because you have n number of the nodes so if you want to write n number of nodes, so you can write this equation n number of times. Correct or not? Because j is getting changed from 1 to n, right? So if you want to write for that, so you can write for uh, your n number of points here. So you, uh, you will become uh, u1, u2, u3, u4, u5, until un. So every time you will get this equation, that first one, then second, then third, and finally you will get here all these n number of the points. If you want to write here one, so if you want to write it for one, what will you get here? You will get uh, j equal to one, so you will write one here. But psi is uh, at that different point, is i. So it will change again to a different point here. So psi for equation one would be one, equation two would be two, and three would be uh, three. It is just like that only. <clears throat> so you are changing your j only here because j is one to n. So if you write j equal to one to n, so you will get here one here, right? So that's what I wrote here. So j is one here, then j is two there, j is three, j is n. Now, psi, you see that everywhere is 1, 1, 1. So that's for equation number 1. You wrote psi equal to 1. Because psi are the 
uh, you have taken a basis function just to do the orthogonalization of this equation. And this is again a set of uh, variables there. So psi 1, psi 2, psi n. So we have taken n number of prime. Practically, it need to be taken infinite. So infinite will not solve the purpose. So we have taken a finite set of psi. So we have taken finite set means n number of the size and each psi would be multiplied by uh, at every node point. So that's what is being expanded here. So if you don't understand much, just keep it here. You just expand it here and j equal to 1 to n. You don't have any doubt here. Psi would change 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just like that. So first equation 1, second equation 2, third equation 3, and keep on going just like that. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Now, this is what your, this term only. This term you expanded in terms of matrix. Now, you don't have this del, because del I already told, because I have not converted here. You don't have here del. Here you have full third derivative. Now, you got this matrix, right? This can be solved. This need integration everywhere. That's what I told you, the integration first. Because everywhere you need integration. Here, here, here. So you should need a good technique just to integrate them easily, right? Now, <clears throat> we will come back to equation number uh, term 2 and term 3. So term 2 may you have uh, del upon del z, you have d11, del c1 upon del z. So we have wrote the expression of c1 in terms of uj and phi j. So this was term 1, this was term 2. Now we want to rearrange them. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, can you understand from where these are coming? Yes, sir. So, this is for first one. If you have first one, you, you can differentiate this, right? You have here del upon del z. So if you will that differentiate uh, this one, so what are you that getting here? Is it fine or something wrong? Hello? Oh, yes, sir, it's fine. Right, so this is from first equation you have this so you have 0 to L you want to integrate that so if you want to integrate here with respect to dz so your first derivative will go away so that's what it went away from here so you have the derivative uh, here dz so dz dz will get cancelled finally you got here d11 del phi upon del z uj phi z this is what now uh, Practically, so this uh, complete, uh, this curly bracket one, <coughs> this bracket one is, is being treated as a first term. Now, psi is treated as a second term. So first you have the integrated this, now the you have minus and derivative of the second term and integration of the first term. That's what is you know, you do the double integration, right? It, integration by parts, is that fine? Yes, sir. So this is for first equation, this term, same thing you wrote for second term. Okay? Yes, sir. Now this and this term can be clubbed together because this is called 0 to L. So these would be clubbed together and these will be treated at the boundary. So let's see how would it come. So next time, uh, next they would club together, the so 0 to L term, this is being club to L, this is uh, being uh, added together. Other parts are added to one of the side, 0 to L, D11, the summation of this del phi upon del z, del psi upon del z, and the, this again, the second term. Now the, the limit can be again interchanged, right? So I mean, uh, summation and the integration sign can be interchanged. So this will go here, and you will get 0 to L here. This this 
sigma sign will go outside, you will get 0 to L here. Now, let's see here, what is here 0 to L? So if you look the, write it for 0, it means you want to write your bottom boundary. If you want to write at L, you are at top, right? So this, these are your boundary conditions, 0 to L1. So let's see here, if you want to write it here. So if you want to write psi equal to 1, so if you, these are your now the boundary condition, right? The, this, uh, have you seen these boundary condition? Okay, boundary condition, yeah. Yeah, boundary condition uh, I wrote here, something there. These are your boundary, right? This is at z equal to L, right? Minus D1 upon DC1 upon the DZ, DC1 upon D2, DC2. This is at Z equal to L, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, these can also be the, the, I mean, the written in terms of your UJ, 5J. So that's what I did here. So this is D11 term. You wrote at the place of C, you wrote UJ, 5J. And that's what you have here, DC upon DZ, right? That's what you have here. DC1 upon DZ, DC2 upon DZ. So that's what you did here. You multiplied the basis function psi1 because the, from there only the function would start. So you will have psi equal to 1 there. So if you will write here, and now if you want to rearrange it, you can write here del C upon del Z, you can take the del upon del Z, you can take outside. You will get this one, and finally you can write this in terms of C. So you will get this is your boundary. That's what we were the talking boundary. Now from where this has come, this you can write from here. It, here itself, if you want to write for L one at L, this this psi will become one. Psi one would become one at L. Fine. <coughs> So you can the yes, write for L. Hello. This uh, these two one conditions you can the write that two times. One is from D one one J one and del phi up or uh, del phi J upon del Z U J phi one. It is for L. Same thing you can write for this one also. Uh, this V J psi one. This is for L equal to one. Same term you can write twice, uh, second term for z equal to 0. Okay, z equal to 0 means you are getting a last point, you are getting there, there this psi n. uj, phi j, we are not changing, we are just changing psi. Only in these two terms. So that's what I wrote this equation for first term when we are the writing here for top at L. So L, uh, I wrote this psi1, here also psi1, and now I am the rearranging it. I am getting ended up with this one. This is the, the nothing but your boundary, which is you have this one only. This is your boundary, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so from there I ended up from by by the um, by the by the arranging it at z equal to L, I ended up with this, and this is equal to my boundary condition. So I wrote this one. So at this particular place at L, I wrote the boundary here at L1 here. So now I want to write for zero. For zero case. Again, at last point, zero means at last point, you are at nth node, and there your psi would become psi n. Rest of the components are same. This is same, this one is same, only psi is getting changed by n only. This is what here. In this one, when you will the write it for zero, your this will only change to n only. Psi i would change to n, psi n. Because you are the writing at last number of nodes. So in that case, I just wrote psi n. Now I am just the rearranging it. And once I am the rearranging it, 
I am getting with this one. So psi n is also one because as we say psi are chosen at the such way that each node it have a value one. Fine. So uh, at nodes it has the value one. So at psi n is one at nth nodes and rest of the uh, nodes it would be zero. So therefore it would be ended up the second boundary here, the one here. So this is dc upon upon dz at bottom. Bottom me kya hai? Paas this term is equal to zero, right? Correct or not? A yes, zero sir. boundary, right? In the case of bottom, if you write this, this is at zero. That z equal to zero, this is zero. Therefore, I wrote it here zero. Okay. So you got both the boundaries there in equation number. One, dono boundary apka agya pe. Now, uh, this is not visible to you. Let me enlarge it. So, so this is what you will uh, uh, get actually. Your this I gave a different uh, um, the matrix name. C1 is boundary condition. The, a matrix which you got this is your top boundary this is your bottom boundary okay and this is practically for your this equation actually equation this one this is practically for uh, your this equation to so this particular term these two terms are being clubbed into that matrix c1 only Fine. Yes, sir. Now, once you have this matrix one, the same thing can be done. Uh, can be do for the uh, in the rest of the two part. Rest of the two part. This D uh, del phi upon del z del psi upon del z. So you can change their uh, summation and and integration. Interchange, so interchange. Uh, once you did interchanging part, you are getting this. Now, up again, what can you do for that? This, you, uh, you see, this one, these are the derivative part, and this you can write for j equal to 1, j equal to 2, j equal to 3, j equal to 4. And once you wrote for all j, after that, you are taking your size. Once you write for all j, after that you change your size. Psi equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. Okay? So this uh, this one again can be changed to the matrix format. So if you want to change this matrix format, this equation, this one, this particular term, these two terms, can be written into this particular matrix format. So this you first equation for j equal to 1, second equation for j equal to 2, third is j equal to 3, 4, j equal to 4 and all and then you go to the nth number of nodes then this is for j equal to n. Now for as j will change your psi would also change so first one your psi is 1 you see here 1 is there everywhere 1, 1, 1 right then you have psi equal to 2 everywhere, then psi equal to 3, and psi, and then you can keep on changing your psi. So this is your second matrix in that one. So practically, finally, you will say that you are ending up with equation 1, you have the residue on the left hand side, R1. This one, the first term you got from the term del C upon del T. This is the term you got from your term del upon del z, d, uh, d11, del c1 upon uh, del z, plus uh, del upon del z, d12, del c2 upon del z. So you got these two terms from here, b1, u, and c1. c1 is from your boundary condition matrix, you got. So everything, uh, no, but b1, u is done, nothing but this. 
ए वन यू यू ऑलरेडी जो है डिफाइंड सब है ए वन यू वन इज द मैट्रिक्स यू गॉट फ्रॉम द टर्म डेल सी अपॉन डेल टी आर यू एबल टू दीन दिकॉल एनी थिंग sir a little bit as it's very complicated it's not complicated it have lot of mathematics and terms so if you will do it peacefully yourself you would be able to understand so let's see so this is your equation 1 practically if i show you your your equation equation is this del c1 upon del t right this was first equation right now this Term you kept it to the this side which become R one so R one is the nothing but del C one upon del T with minus sign of all these one right now each of them you calculated in terms of phi and uh, u and phi j right u j phi j and b j phi j that's what I am just substituting everything here. so this is practically uh, uh, i can uh, go back again one more time no, because the, this is the just a formula after that your work is almost done so this was here right so you are uh, this is your r1 right this was your term is practically nothing but your dc upon dt ye wala term which you wrote in this particular format finally you ended up with this and this you wrote in terms of this matrix is a1 u1 dot this is practically your term is practically dc1 upon dt so you wrote this in terms of matrix this one now the left hand side term you have this one so this also you wrote in terms of the matrices this one has become boundary this is the another the, uh, the matrix which i gave the name of b so this one came here and after that uh, i changed the limit here 0 to l1 and after that uh, you arrange this and this is your boundary condition matrix which is your 0 to l1 and this is your another matrix in the derivative terms you have there so this is again you wrote it and all these has been expanded and this you wrote in terms of matrix of b1 u So this entire matrix is called B one, and these are your variables which are U one, U two, U three, U n. This is what you have. So finally, your equation one is being, in short way, you can write that R one equal to A one U one dot minus B one U minus C one. So you know all these the, the matrices, and uh, you can uh, solve them right by taking the inversion of that right. same way can be uh, can you write for equation number 2 whatever we did previously just for equation number 1 same thing we can write for equation number 2 means this second equation you can write for this similarly you will get uh, these matrices so you have to try this whether are you getting these matrices in the same way because all uh, everything is same only thing wherever you have u it will change by v correct hello yes so once we have all the the matrices now you can expand that and finally this is your matrix b1 and uh, again uh, now you have two equation equation number 1 equation number 2 1 may be aapke paas u1 u2 un hai Two may be. You have passed. You are getting U one, U two, or U n. So all U's can be clubbed in a one matrix. Equation number one, equation number two, all can be clubbed together because each is going from U one to U n. Only thing you have this matrix. It is the bottom one. It is top one. So I will say what? How would it tell? So all U a and U are clubbed together. B and U also clubbed together. B and U, where are B? Here also you have A and B. Here also you have B two and U two, and C two. C two all boundaries, all all boundaries are clubbed together. 
all b and u club together uh, all a2 and b2 and a1 and u1 are clubbed together because this b dash also have your derivative thing del b upon del t here also uh, in this case uh, uh come here well, this first one this one also you have the derivative here you, you see here a u u1 u2 un so u1 u2 are the concentration of c1 c2 b1 b2 are concentration of concentration of the c2 so all are clubbed together in a, this particular format a u dot b into u plus c and your final matrix of a matrix will look like that so what you have here the first part first upper part this only this one uh, from one to n here psi one to psi n this first up upper part is your equation number one second part from psi n plus one to psi two n plus one because this is also getting changed from one to n so to write in the uh, matrix format i just made it here n plus one to two n because now it has become twice this is your second equation so bottom part is the second equation first part is your first e equation now first part is only being the uh, multiplied by all these terms all the time because everything is being present in equation number one U B present B B present. So therefore U matrix is this. So this entire thing is being the multiplied by this one. So these are your concentrations. So this you got the matrix of 2n by 2n. This is got 2n by 1. Now this is U dot. U dot means your derivative concentrations, of, which is your DC upon DT actually. So this are not now parcel. This is not total DU one upon DT. So these are the concentration change or the differential equation of the solvent one concentration. This is differential equation of solvent two. This is all your derivative one. This is your boundary conditions of matrix. So, uh, so the uh, the upper one are your boundaries at uh, at actually for component one. Lower one are your boundaries of component two. So once you have all these matrices and boundary, you can just uh, integrate them by any of the ODE solver. These are two n number of ODEs, right? You have here two n into one. So you have two n number of the ODEs. Now you can solve them. This is your B matrix. B matrix is the diffusion the matrix where you have the diffusion terms, which are also have integration everywhere, right? You have integration everywhere. So in your you see uh, in this also you have the integration in matrix A also you have the, the uh, means integration term. Matrix B also you have the integration sound. Therefore, I uh, taught you for the integration sound that how to integrate the so many number of the integration terms. So yeah, this have a lot of mathematics and if you will skip it at one place, uh, you will leave the track. So what I will leave to you, I want you to today just to uh, go through this. You uh, I have already sent you my paper, right? You you have you are you able to download that one? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. based on that, just take this equation only, and in this try to put that C C. Uh, what we have taken C only summation of uj phi j yes or no so with the help of that paper and thing try to uh, convert these into these matrices which we have shown here just like this one and uh, just like this b matrix try to convert it because this is the main part because the finite element formulation ends here only because this is what is finite element formulation the finite element what has it what has it done your PDE has been converted to ODE. That's what is the finite element one is. Okay.
So once you have ODE, you, you can use your any ODE solver. So this parser sign you, you don't have here actually. This need to be changed. So you have all ODEs. So you can solve it by any technique. Only thing you need to have think about some technique to integrate that. So this I taught you this uh, three point Gauss quadrature one. Do you have the another class or you are free for that? We have class two. Okay, no problem. So tomorrow, so today work is your, uh, just take your pen and pencil, please formulate this. Are you able to get it or not? Okay. okay. So I, once you will get it, then uh, uh, after that we have the, some other part, we will do it actually. Okay. So we will end here.